Hey folks, David Molnar here, your photography mentor, tuning in on a fine Monday morning here with uh, the one, the only, the self-proclaimed David's ginger shot, uh, Rich yes. Coleman. <laughs> Hello, David. How are you doing today, buddy? Man, I'm fantastic. I uh, had some family visiting the last couple of days, and that was nice to have my sister, two of my sisters in town. So it's good to hug their hug their nets. One of my sisters is a hair cutter, so she she trimmed my hair on on the back porch. That was delightful. She cuts your hair it's too. The best place. She? she does cut. Well, I actually did this, so don't judge her by this. Ooh, uh, yeah. I, I need I need I need some Esther in my life, but. <laughs> And she's we'll on a there. road. She's on a road trip. So, uh, so, anyways. But yeah, the Esther Faith. She owns Salty Hair Salon uh, in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. She's amazing. Go check her out. Hey, Rich. Yes, I, I don't question. know her Instagram. Go for oh, it. It's, I think it's just Salty Hair Salon at Salty yeah. Hair Salon, something like that. Um, give her a follow. Give her a like. Esther Faith is awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Hey, I have a question for you, Rich. Have you ever tried blindfolded archery? Never. Oh, you don't know what you're missing. Hey, hey. Boom. hey, Rich, we Sound always do effects. giveaways. We always do giveaways on our podcast. What do you want to give it away? What do you want? We're to all, give away we're, today? we're always super prepared for these two. Um, yes. well, I'm talking a little bit about my rememberer. So let's give away your favorite hard drive. That way you can remember your pictures forever. Hmm. Okay, sweet. Giving away a hard drive. I feel like we're giving away the same things over and over again. We should like. Well, we need to think of new stuff. I give away stuff within TPM all the time, and they have stickers of my face on them. We have all kinds of stuff. Mm. I give away a remote release trigger. Like mm. the people tell me what they want, and I mm. and I get that, and I give it away. So in in the comments to win this hard drive, all you have to do is share share this podcast, but also say I'd like to win blank, and if you can convince Mr. David, maybe he'll hook it up. <laughs> yeah, so not in the comments specifically, but click share, and in your comments when you share, uh, all you have to Correct. do is share, and you can be eligible to win this five terabyte. Is, are they up to six terabytes yet? I only have the five terabyte ones, but five terabyte. I don't archives, know. Hundred ish, hundred and twenty bucks, something like that, depending on the on the the day of the sale. You know, depending on the uh, day of the sale, same. depending on yeah, depending on if it's on sale today. You know, Amazon Prime used to be like two days, and now it's like you know four weeks. You know, it's kind of hilarious. it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, I ordered a we, we ordered a, one of our employees a birthday present, and they still don't have it. And I was like, well, what, I messaged Autumn. I was like, Autumn, what do you think? And she's like, about what? I was like, nothing. <laughs> hey, so it's coming. I see that drum right there. Guess what I got. Ooh, great. this is what podcasts are all about, and I love it. Tell me, tell me got, what you got. Tell me how you I love it. I got a new bag. I got a new bag. <laughs> you know what I haven't done yet. This is, this is horrible, but I had some sisters in town. I got the brand new Mavic Air Two. Is that what it's called? Mavic Air Two. Correct. I haven't flown it yet. I haven't put the propellers on. I got to take these things off and put the propellers on. But it's really cool. Like this, this kit thing came with like a bag. The remote control is like upgraded, so it's pretty cool. It's called the really Fly More cool. Combo. For fly those of you watching, it's the fly more combo. Ugh, I buy all my drone stuff. Ooh. Ooh, that is sick. I like that a lot. Rich, you're breaking up for me. Uh, can you can you hear me now? Okay, perfect. We're breaking awesome. up. I, I oh, can no, hear no, you. We're not, we're not breaking up, but um, yeah, I haven't even tried this yet. Uh, here, here. To, well, whatever. It goes like that. I need Tragic. to take the face off. Well, I think I think I need to take off the little thing in Bob. Can I just take that off? Pop it. Can you pop it off? I don't know. Anyways, whatever. I got this new. What drone. you need is a MacGyver testing. in your life to do that I, for you. I'm going to be testing it out. Oh, I just didn't want to break it. You know what I mean? I'm going to be testing it out soon. And uh, the other day, I was flying my drone and I saw dolphins and a little shark, baby shark. Yeah, it was amazing. And then, um, yeah, I'm, I'm horrible here at all, at all this stuff. But anyways, it's Rich, great. You're, mine's, you're, mine's sitting back there. Just is just for pretty looks. I do fly it. Um, like there's a storm here today because I live on the Outer Banks and it's like a tropical depression. So I'm not going to be flying today, but I do fly quite often and I enjoy drone photography and videography. It's like the only time I ever really play with videos for the drone. It's just so fun to fly. That's right. That's right. For those of you afraid to do it, I let my three-year-old son and my my seven-year-old daughter fly all the time. Really? Oh man, they're oh my, you should like I'll just take them above the trees. 
Mm-hmm. They can't crash the thing, just, you know? Yeah, I know, because like, I even I accidentally crashed it, almost crashed it into a railing, and it was like, if this is my microphone right here, it was the drone went, and went up around it and actually didn't touch it. Yeah. It was like, and, uh, so anyways, sick it's, is pretty, it's pretty amazing, the, the DJI they stuff. They scream at you. The newer, the newer they get, they're like, beep, 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 beep. Like, they oh, yell yeah, at you. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of like your car, like slamming on brakes so you don't run into anything. But this, this Mavic Air 2 has like... Uh, I think 40 megapixels on the camera. I haven't shot it yet. I think I'm excited. I, I just got it. So I'm like, uh, I, I All got right, it. next week. That's your homework for this week, David, is next week. Mm. I want to hear and maybe even see a picture from that thing so we can tell all these people about it. Mm. That's cool. We can do that. We can do that. We Drone that. hobbyists, like, man. We love it. We could talk about We're like nerdy. latest gear and stuff like that each time, each week, or something like that. It could kind of be a fun little. DJI will mail us, mail us some stuff for free, maybe. Yeah. DJ, get on that, DJI. Um, but, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah. I say DGI a lot because DJI uh-huh. is the Dow, Dow Jones Institute, and in China they say DGI. So my brain is, they Chinese. say DGI, so I say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. whatever it is. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it is DJI, right? Like the letters DJI? But their stock is DGI. Ah, uh, weird. That's crazy. Well, hey, it weird? We- it's interesting, and that's what they say. That's what they say at B&H Photo. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're giving away something. Share it. We'll give you something. We have people... We're giving away stuff all the time, David. I love well, it. Well, today we're giving away a hard drive, not a, not a uh, a drone, but we should give away a drone. That'd be pretty fun. So I'm in. I, I think that I think that giveaway would fly. You know what I mean? I don't think it would. Crash. It could really take off. I think it could really take off. It'd be a new spin on giveaways for sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It'd be nice to put that type to pop of. Me up. It'd be nice to put the drone into like the the giveaway rotation. I'm in. Can I win? I want to win the drone. Like I have to like make so much money with mine. Just to be like, wife, I need a new drone. She's like, no, you don't need it. Like that's like my thing. It's like, hey babe, I need a new camera. Man, did you see the new price leak for that freaking R five? Sixty seven hundred or something? Is that? Oh is that my right? gosh! Yeah, I pray to the Lord that's not true. I know. I was I was actually hoping that's it more was than more than the one of... DX. You what? what it's more think? than the one DX Mark three. It's, it's. I mean, it was like that. an Austra- like Australian price leak or something like that. It wasn't actually. I don't know. What, what did you did you research it more? I just saw like a. a no, it was just it was just that one. But still, like I was hoping it was going to be closer to the four thousand dollar range, not the six seven thousand dollar range. I was hoping it was going to be closer to like the fifteen hundred dollar range, but you know. Oh anyways. yeah, me too. I wish. Yeah. But but the specs on the the uh, Canon R five are just absolutely incredible, right? Like they're just they're just mind blowing. The specs that it's we're like reading. Perfect, it's like the perfect camera. If, I know. It's like they took everything that we've been talking about for 10 years and they were like, okay. Just put it all into one. Let's, well, and, let's and that's put it, it that, okay. And that's the thing that Canon does, Nikon does, Sony does. They'll like, instead of just putting it all into one package, they'll have like, this camera gets these special features and this camera gets these special features. And you're kind of like, well, I really want to shoot in low light and shoot concerts and sports. Uh, but I want to shoot a high mech. Yeah, I know anyway, it's just it's just crazy. They they'll like they withhold stuff intentionally so that they could sell. It's kind of like the iPhone, like I don't know, not making something waterproof when other people like next year we've got a water resistant phone or whatever, and it's like it's a new thing and Samsung's got it for you. Anyways, whatever. Um, people they have to withhold stuff so they have something to sell later on. I mean, I guess that's just like the thing. <laughs> Or right. could they could be like us and just make new content every ten minutes. That could be. Yeah, I was gonna say it's different than us with the photo mentorship, which is our membership community where students don't get anything withheld. Because if you're a member of the photo mentorship, and I know there's a bunch of you guys on right now, um, you know, if you're a member, you get unlimited access to all of our things. And how many courses do we have now? Like 25, 25 different courses. Twenty five and counting, dude. We're up, we're up to like seventy five presets, too. It's it's nuts. Seventy five presets. So meaning like there's like almost yeah. The, well, not seventy five plus twenty five is carried three is a hundred. So we have literally like a hundred products in there that are amazing. That our students get unlimited access to all the courses and they get new presets every single month. So it's pretty awesome. And they get Facebook Lives with us and get all their questions answered. It's pretty amazing. And we give stuff away every time we go live. Since I came on, I was like, let's give something away every time. Rich is just spending our money. But it's great. We love it. We love to be able to bless our students. Bro, I book all kinds, I book all kinds of weird stuff with your credit card. Don't check it from this weekend. <laughs> I get all kinds of weird stuff with the David Molnar card. Uh, one of our employees, not going to say <laughs> who, <laughs> uh, accidentally charged something uh, that was not a business-related item. <laughs> And like two seconds later, he or she will not be named, but uh, like changed it real quick and was like, hey, I accidentally did this anyways. It's kind of funny. But I accidentally bought a car 
with your card. Is that okay? I mean, Thank God, there was God no, you never told me not high. to. <laughs> yeah, like the first time you got a credit card uh, with our company, you were like, so what's the credit limit? I'm like, $30. <laughs> $30 for you. Uh, <laughs> That's a question. I kind of need to know the answer to that. Nope. nope said so. said employee <laughs> is texting me right now. She's like, oh my gosh. Hey, I said he or she that will not be named. <laughs> uh, anyways, we have lots of fun over here. But I bet you can guess who it was. I don't know if they'll bet correctly, you know, but I guess we'll see. I guess we'll you David, know, we can bet and see. Can I, who... can I te- let me tease these people with what we're talking about today so, to, to go, hop go on for board. It. Go for it. Today, we're both going to talk to you, but I'm going to talk to you because David's career is like, you look at David and you're like, oh, wow, look how successful he is. And like the path that he took to it was so unique. And like, honestly, I don't, I couldn't have done that. So you're kind of like a unicorn. You're a beautiful blue eyed unicorn. And I'm like the grunt ginger there's my, there's my guy. There's my unicorn uh, hair right there. It's like what do they call that? Your horn. You're super horny today. I love it, David. You look great. You look amazing. <laughs> today, I'm going to talk to you about when I started my business, the things that I did right, the things that I did wrong, and the things that I missed or I was confused about. So today's podcast is about starting your business, and I'm going to tell you part of my story, and I'm going to tell you the things I did right the things I did wrong, and the things that were missing or I was confused on. How does that sound, David? Boom sauce. I'm I'm like almost like like, Almost like we're ready. I'm going to get my chair and just like my lounge chair. Lay down. Lay on the the sofa, and I'll get like glasses, and I'll I'll just – I'll dive into you. Yeah. Go for it. (laughs) Well, to to start off, like it's it's, it can be a very scary thing like jumping into this let's make money to shoot or getting paid to shoot – there's a lot of insecurities that you have as an artist, as a person. I was just highlighting was, a comment. Charlie said, I oh. love David is always shaking his head at Rich. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's true. And this uh, is the very censored version. You should hear my, when I had another podcast, that was the much more rated R version of this. Oh, God. <laughs> but this is so fun. This he, is great. he loves Jesus. He's just got freedom. He, yeah. He's just, he's just, I just free. I have just freedom, freedom of speech. speech. <laughs> hey, I can um, go to Lowe's, but I can't go to church. I get it. It's cool. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, that's the, that's ooh, my low ooh, of the week. Ooh, David Monar. David Monar. Pe- 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 people are going to be having church at Walmart now because everyone can just go to Walmart. And you have to wear a mask, but you can't. But but we'll just touch the same stuff. Okay. Keep Perfect. on going. Keep on going. Go to the beach. Yeah. David, here's what I'm going to say that I got out of the bag, out of the gate when I started this business. Right out the gate, I realized I never took photography for granted like my mother-in-law did or like my father did or people that thought I was just playing around as art. I realized really early on that it was work. Um, just because it's fun and creative doesn't mean it's not a hustle. So the thing that I got like correct, the thing that I got right, is that I realized it is work and there's a lot of hustle in it and there's no such thing as free money. I just realized like this is the kind of hustle that I liked. So all encompassing big picture, the thing that I realized and I, that really worked well for me is I realized nobody's giving out free money. I am going to have to work for it. And how can I make this photography thing work for me? So people that think I just stand there and push a button and then just like sit down at a wedding and it's not very hard. David, tell me how stressful, how fast paced and how crazy a wedding can be. A wedding can be nuts. Absolutely crazy. I, I think it's probably one of the most stressful things you can do as a photographer. I'm sure there's like, you know, photographing the president that I haven't had the privilege of doing uh, that may be yeah. pretty stressful in moments. Um, but I, the I mean, camera, I, with the camera, FCC yes. compliant. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's stress. I'm sure there's like high intense events that you can stress. But I'd say generally speaking, generally speaking, um, the, you know, the, one of the more stressful things you can do is photograph weddings because you're, there's so much pressure to get it right. Right. Well, what you're, what you don't think of when you think about taking pictures is it's not just a photo. Like, let's say I was going to get sued for shooting a wedding and I don't want anybody to think like that. I have great insurance and we'll talk more about that later. But part of my insurance is liability insurance because if I, somebody pays me $4,000 to shoot their wedding and I mess up, they sue me for the four thousand dollars plus the million dollars of damages of losing that memory, because that bride has been thinking about that day her whole life since she was four. Hmm. So you take that pressure 
as a photographer on your shoulders. And like me, I learned that I loved it. I actually perform a little better with a little bit of pressure, but it's not just like some cakewalk where like my, my dad for years just was like, what? Like you get to push a button. Like that's what you get to do for money. Like he was so confused by it. But luckily I was into it enough to realize that I knew and anything you do is going to be work. Some work is just more fun than others. And some work doesn't feel like work because you're having fun. Mm. If that at all makes sense to you, that's what little rich Coleman's brain figured out. Now, on the flip side of that, I did get some major things wrong, David, and that's probably like as I get go on, the segments get a little longer. Uh, the thing I got wrong, and I, I can hit on this for a minute because it's super potent. Um, the thing I got wrong when I started my business is I was not ready to. I was underprepared. I was underskilled. I did not value education or my trade craft. It was just something I did not ready for it. Now, one thing I did not do, and I did a little bit, but I did not do it enough, is I didn't mentor with somebody. I didn't go hands-on in the field and work with enough people before I just decided I was doing this photography thing. Hmm. And the reason I didn't is I, I was completely wrong. I thought, man, everybody around me sucks. Like, I don't want to learn all these sucky habits, these bad <laughs> habits. Right. But one thing I realized later is, like, let's say if I would have interned with the worst photographer here for a year – I would have absorbed everything that they taught me and then I could have wrung it out like a sponge and what was left over is good stuff. Like I wrung out all the crap, all the the bad business, all the bad ways to shooting. But at the end of it, if you go work for somebody and don't take anything good out of it, I blame you, the person, not the person teaching you. Yeah. Because you should always be able to get perspective and insight whenever you are – in a mentorship. And that's one thing I really dropped the ball. I needed a teacher and I did not have one. So I had a lot of frustration, a lot of crying, a lot of tears, a lot of headache and heartbreak because I just tried to go for it. And you don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater to, you know, borrow an old expression, you know, because yeah. anyone, you know, the, the, I love it when people have the perspective is I can learn something from anyone. You know, like everyone has something to teach me, even if it's someone who's not very smart. I, I'm sure they, um, it sounds super degrading, but I'm sure they have some life lessons that they can teach me. You know what I mean? And so if there's a business that you don't, or a photographer that you don't necessarily super respect, but you're like interning with them or you're assisting them, I'm sure there's things that, you know, you could learn. Uh, you know, for, for example, um, there, you know, I used to work for was for a summer. I worked for Biff at Shooters at the beach, and I'm I'm in no way painting him in a bad light. He was amazing. Like I learned so many amazing things from him. But I also learned that I didn't want to run a, an associate photography company. You know, like his company was called you know is called Shooters at the Beach, and it's an amazing thing. If you're you know visit the Outer Banks, you should go and get your family portrait taken because they'll take amazing care of, care of you. But for me, I learned like, hey, I would rather build a business around just me specifically because his business wasn't Biff Jennings; it was Shooters at the Beach, and there's nothing wrong with that. It was just a, it was a different thing than I wanted to build. So I learned to not be like, oh, just because he's running a different type of business than maybe I want to run. Uh, I wasn't going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. There was there was so much wisdom that I could learn and glean from him for those three or four months that I worked for him that summer. You know, so everyone has something that we can teach you, or that that, that you can learn from them. Even in these podcasts, when we're talking about silly things, we're hopefully going to add some nuggets in each of these podcasts that you'll you'll have some amazing takeaways from every single episode. Like that's the that's the goal. Yes, we'll talk about some cheesy jokes. Yes, we'll talk about some silly stuff. And, uh, and having church in Walmart uh, or whatever, but but uh, but we're gonna have you know we're gonna have we're gonna have some fun too, and, and you're gonna you're gonna you know take, do some takeaway, get some takeaways, and have some some good nuggets in there, and hopefully some chicken nuggets as well. Yeah, chicken nuggets for the win. Chick Fil A is open today. Yeah, so Monday. Go ahead. Oh, uh, it is open. Yeah, there's not one. I have to go drive two hours to go to Chick Fil A. Thanks for bringing that up. No, but not having somebody like David was my mentor. Like once I got established. And once I started, you know, really taking it seriously, because when I first started out, I didn't know, you know, I knew I liked it, but I didn't know that was going to be my career. Like I was trying this thing out, like with training wheels on and I just jumped in way too quick. And I mean, if you look at my work back then, it was awful. Like people should have not paid me $2,000 to shoot their wedding. Like 
Dear those clients, I'm sorry. Let me re-edit those raw files, and we'll get back Dear to you. Dear those clients, yeah, good. Yeah, <laughs> but I will say on the flip side, you know, doing those shoots, you know, at a cheaper rate than I am now, and getting that experience, you know, really does help because, like, in the world, you know, experience counts over education. You know, I thought because I went to college for photography, I knew everything, and I knew nothing. You know, yeah, I knew how to develop a photo, which is kind of weird in today's photography world. Like I knew how to make my own, you know, develop my own negatives. Like it was, it was fun. And I had this technical know-how. I had no idea how to execute this whole thing. So a thing that I did wrong is I was just underprepared and I needed a teacher. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's a big reason why David and I do this at all anyway. If I can do, if I can say one thing on a podcast or in a live lesson or in a course I shoot that can just help you succeed. That's really what we want. I want you to have it better than I did because, you know, I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did. I was the kind of guy where I really had to mess up to understand how it worked. I have Mm -hmm. to deconstruct something to see how it works. And if I can just show you from my experience, this is what a flash does and looks like. I thought it was because I broke mine for a second. (laughs) No, this is a, this is a flash, man. That's the, that's the bulb of a flash. Because I'm a okay. weird and I take things apart. Um, if I can take something apart and figure it out for you and make your job easier, that's exactly what I wish I had in the first, you know, honestly, first like five years of my business. And then like when I caught up to David, he was really able to help, you know, with that business track mm-hmm. and that business mindset and teaching me that, you know, I'm smart enough to do things better and wiser. Because if there's anything David Molnar taught me, it's I can do more. You're super inspiring, so inspire me. No, I was just going to ask you, like, what are some of the things that you, uh, like, what are some examples? And if you said this, sorry, I, I missed it. But what are some examples of things that you kind of wish you had known, like, when you were starting out? Like, for, let's talk about, I'm sure there's business things that you'd want to know that you oh, wish yeah. you'd known. But then, obviously, there's maybe some skill things that you wish you had known or permission to have freedom in certain areas and not stress about certain things. Like, let's talk from a technical side real quick. Like, what are some of the things that you wish you had known when you were starting your business? Because you said you're, oh, you want to apologize no. to your old clients yes. and re-edit their focus. And it was, it was them, almost right? all technical. It was almost all technical. Like, my confusing, my yellow, my yellow post-its, the, the, the next section, things that I, I was confused about, didn't understand, oh, or the things that I were didn't... missing from my business. Mm-hmm. But the thing that was wrong, technically, was I didn't understand how to make the camera do what I want. It was so severely frustrating being in a paid shoot situation to where, man, imagine this, I'm gonna paint a picture. You show up to do a shoot, today it's a little cloudy, I'm having to shoot inside, the weather's not perfect, I have to shoot inside, and in my heart and in my head, I know that I'm gonna have to deliver subpar crappy pictures to my client that paid me good money. In the pit of my stomach, I know I have to deliver this trash because I don't know how to make the camera do what my mind sees. We already talked about see, shoot, and edit. I was not seeing, I was not shooting, and I was editing to save my life. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm like talking back to people on their features. No, no, it's cool. There's there's nothing more terrifying than knowing you have to deliver bad images for Mm. good money. Uh, Even if it wasn't much money, the pit, the, 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 that's a horrible feeling. Like being in the middle of the shoot and being confused because of the stupid piece of tech in your hand. Like the fact that this is my frustration point is the biggest mistake I made being underprepared. I mean, now I'm like a MacGyver and I could fix this with like a, a, a napkin and a piece of gum. But that's not something I had before I started. I really wish I had the camera know how that I have now. Um, and within the photo mentorship, that's like my favorite thing to help teach. It's like, Spend time with this little thing. Get to know it. Let it be like the back of your hand, just like playing guitar behind me. Like after you play with it enough, I mean, number one, you're going to suck at it. If I gave David a guitar, if he doesn't know how to play, he's going to be awful for like a year. That's just even even if you practice every day, you're going to suck for months. But after a while, your muscle memory kicks in and the same thing happens with my camera. My muscle memory kicks in and I look outside, I know how to change my settings because I got off of auto mode and I was able to finally let that camera start working for my brain instead of just praying that the camera is going to produce something okay. Right. So, so, you know, starting out, you were, you feel like one of the biggest mistakes you made is not being able to actually tell your camera what to do. 
yeah. essentially be the oh. boss of your camera and getting the images that you actually see in your head, which is funny because it's a totally solvable issue. Like it's a hundred percent solvable, especially if you take our courses like master your camera or attend one of our photography boot camps that are all included for free, included in, well, not for free, but included in the photo mentorship, you know, well, the thing like that you was can bad solve about those problems. Thing, oh yeah. Like it was over, like the way we do it is so much better. Like before I would just YouTube something and I'd get like a little piece. I'd have to watch like five hours of YouTube to get like one usable thing to where like with the way you teach and the way I teach now, it's like the camera's behind me. I'm shooting it shows the camera settings and like you're getting to see me like frustrated in real time. Like, Oh, the camera settings aren't always perfect. Oh, a camera can fall. Like real life happens to me and you. And I'm so glad we don't just like glaze over that and pretend we're like the best in the world. No, you just have to kind of go with the flow. Cause if there's one thing I can't control, David, I tell all my clients this, I can't control the weather and I can't control sunset. So like half of my issue is like orchestrating people and like getting them to understand like I realize you have this vision of your day, but if all my pictures are Saturday night after sunset because you're Jewish and the Passover, like, you know what I mean? Like I can't perform my job. Mm -hmm. So yeah, knowing, knowing your camera, I, I know that was a lot and a mouthful, but it's a completely solvable problem that I just took for granted and just kind of winged it. Like that is not something you should wing. Well, and the other thing is like, yeah, it's not something you should wing. And the other thing is, you're talking about 15 years ago, right? I mean, timeline-wise, mm-hmm. uh, ish. Oh yeah, and um, or something like that, 10, 15 years ago. And back then, I didn't really, I didn't have a course. I didn't have the photo mentorship to teach me step by step how to use my camera. I didn't have mentors. You know, I could ask photographers questions if I could get their attention. Uh, for a couple minutes, but their goal, their focus wasn't to help me. It was maybe if they're being kind or generous enough to do that. And like you and I have said, we've had mentors step in our step in our lives at different points and and help us out. But it, we didn't have someone consistent to be there that was sitting there rooting for us and trying to help us succeed. Because I'm just saying, I wish, like literally, that's why we created the photo mentorship. Because I wish that we had actually had. Uh, those resources and those experts to ask questions in real time and actually answer our questions and help us avoid what was one of your biggest frustrations starting your business, which is not knowing how to make your camera take the pictures that you actually want to take. And that's such mm-hmm. a solvable thing, especially if you join the photomentorship.com because you can take the master your camera course and then go on to take the other courses and really learn how to you know take amazing photos every single time. So what's the next The next is probably the most important part. So I told you what was right. I realized that it was work. I told you what was wrong, that I didn't know how to use the tools I had to work for me. But right, wrong, and then the last part is missing and confused. So this is what was missing from my business and I was confused about. Hmm. And it's not what you think it is. Like this took me years and now I'm kind of like if I if I haven't mastered photography, but I've maybe mastered the craft of this part that was missing because I realized it early enough to to pivot. Um, you know, you should go forward. When something happens, you pivot and keep going. The second you stop is the second you die. It's the second you stop learning. If you ever get to this photography journey and think you've learned everything, that's the second you become boring, stale, gross water. You need to keep moving just like a stream or a river so that water stays fresh and clean. But the thing that grew my business into providing for my wife and my wife be a stay-at-home mom for 10 years, like the thing that made this business work is I realized relationships are the most important thing. Now, last week, David and I taught you it's really – it's a lot better, to, easier to sell yourself. David learned it's better – easier to be a photographer as David Molnar than this cohort's team of running people. Because when I tried to do that, it was more of a headache of scheduling 10 people than it was for me just to show up and shoot. I enjoyed showing up and shooting. But man, you'll sit there and ask yourself, why would anybody hire me when they can hire the guy three doors down? That's way better. And that's a very honest, real question. Why? Why would they book you if they could get that guy down the street that's better? And you know he's better, even though it frustrates you it's better. The reason they book you is because David, they can only get the experience of working with David as David. They can only get the experience of working with Rich as Rich. Mm -hmm. So the second I branded myself and became relational, 
is when my business took off. So I'm like this funny idiot guy. I'm like that all the time. My wife loves and hates it. My pastor <laughs> shakes his head at me. He called me a vagabond yesterday on the internet. My pastor called me a vagabond. <laughs> and I'm like, I have a home, I promise. But like, here's a story, David. This is a really funny story. So I'm shooting this wedding at this house called the Grand Ritz Palm. Really beautiful house on the Outer Banks. And these people are straight Jersey Shore people to like paint a picture. And if you're from Jersey, it's cool. I love you. David's family's from Jersey. But this is like straight TV style Jersey, Jersey Shore people. So they're, <laughs> they're just really loud. I show up and I'm like, okay, which one of you naked ladies is the bride? That's like always my go-to first question. So I find out who the bride is. And the maid of honor is about eight months pregnant. So she's feeling a little self-conscious because she's like the largest bellied one there. So anyway, the bride's new mom, this is a new mom or stepmom story. The bride's new mom comes in and I can just feel the tone in the room. Everybody just kind of gets like mad and like glazed over. I'm like, there, there's a lot of tension between the bride and the bridesmaids and this new mom who's like only 10 years older than the bride. And then she starts to interject herself in the room as mom. And the bride's like, don't call yourself mom. Like I'm hearing them. And I realized this bride's paying me five grand. This bride is paying like 30 grand for the house. This bride's paying all this money. She's probably spent 60 whatever grand for this wedding. And she's having a horrible day because of this psycho lady. Like, you know what I mean? Like no matter how pretty she is, no matter how much money she spends on decor, because she's having a bad day emotional day, nothing I do photography wise is going to make this girl feel happy. Mm. So what I do is I say, Hey mom, can you come outside on the porch with me? And the, everybody's like, don't call her mom. Like they're like yelling at me at this point. And I'm like, trust me. So I'm like, mom, come outside. And the, the new mom, that's what I call her new mom in quotes. The new mom is all of a sudden stoked. She's like posing for me because they tensions off the bride and on this blonde hair, like super brown skin tan lady now like and I'm taking her picture and I'm like you know what go down the stairs and it would look really stunning if I shot you and you kind of looked back up at me so I, she walks down the stairs I take that picture and I say okay can you give, give us like five minutes I walk back in and I lock the slider door and then I look at number <laughs> three then I look at number three bridesmaid and I said hey not the pregnant one I said hey can you go lock the downstairs door too let's lock this crazy woman out and the, and, the, and the pregnant bridesmaid said, yeah, she told me that she hated our dresses because we all looked pregnant in them. Like that, the new mom was just like making this whole day worse. So I locked her out of the house, literally. <laughs> and that's like where my relationship got to take over as part of their day. And then they were immediately like smiling and happy. And like we're hearing her knock on the door. It's like 100 degrees outside. And new mom is just melting with her fake blonde hair. <laughs> and it was just like this really fun moment for me. And I was like, holy crap, I got to be an idiot like I love. My clients love me. I could have like missed the first kiss and they still would have loved me. And at that point I realized it doesn't matter what picture I take as much as the experience of working with me. And <laughs> that's what was missing out of like the first four or five years of my business. It's not about the pictures, David. It's about you. <laughs> oh my God. That's a, I'm just, I'm like, so, I'm like so nervous. How did that play out? Like that's amazing, A, because your client was the bride. You know, like that's, and I don't that's care who it pays me. That's who my client is. My client mm. is the little princess and it's her day. Mm. And even if she's being a psychopath, I'm gonna try to make her happy. Wow. Um, what, what, like, how did that play out with the mom? Did she realize like the, the mom? She, uh, yeah, she knew she was, she was giving me like the cold shoulder the whole day. Um, but I, <laughs> again, like I, I found out and then the whole rest of the day, David, you know what I did? Honestly, this is like another jerk move. I gave her a reflector. Because she kept like getting him, she kept getting in my way, like when I was shooting family, and I was like, "Okay, hey mom, can you hold this reflector? Perfect. No, right above your face. Put it right above your face. Perfect." And then we would walk down the beach, and she would like try to follow us. And I'm like, "No, no, no. You have to stay right there. You're doing so good. So if somebody's being a headache at a wedding, instead of oh calling my. them out on it, give them a job and make them feel like it's really important." So she was holding a reflector on the beach, like a hundred yards away, over her head for like thirty minutes, and it wasn't doing anything. It was. Oh no, dude, it was doing nothing. I was just getting her, and like they, and I told oh. them, I was telling like the bridesmaids. I don't really need her to do that, but she's over there now and she's not making you guys mad. So that's just how Rich Coleman rolls at a wedding. Dude, I have not heard this story, but that is amazing. Um, I mean, I feel like that's like how you, how you treat your toddlers. Like for me, it's like if my kids are screaming, my almost one-year-old in a couple of days, two-year-old, almost two-year-old, um, 
like if she's like screaming blah 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 i'm like is that a birdie over there and she's like where you what? know yeah. and she gets distracted or i'm like hey can you help me like do the espresso machine or whatever it is or can you hold this spoon and pretend like like give them something to do and then they feel like they're being productive you know uh, and that's actually i tell every client that man every client everyone yeah that is there's so... always an aunt joan there's always an aunt joan or an uncle steven and i'm like instead of like making it awkward before the wedding like hey i hate you uncle joe like don't do that yeah. be like hey uncle joe here's this thing i need this is a wedding album guest book as soon as the wedding's over i need you to take it to the reception hall immediately it's the yeah. most important thing in my wedding and then all of a sudden they're gone and like everybody's happy because yeah. as a photographer it's like that's the worst job like everybody wants to eat everybody wants to get drunk and everybody wants to hug the bride and groom but because the photographer is not efficient with their time, it's like the mm. worst. The cocktail hour becomes the worst. But mm. learning to be relational, man. And and honestly, the other half of that is the same thing. A different side of the same coin is networking. If I could tell any photographer learning right now what they should do, it's you should really network with other people in your industry and the vendors. Because if another vendor – like let's say – they book a house first or they book a pastor and that pastor says, hire David Molnar. Like, yeah, well, we don't know who we're going to hire. Hire David Molnar. Before they even talk to you, they love you because somebody they already trust is telling them to book you. Like it can't get any better and any more free than networking. So the two things I missed when I started my business was I wasn't relational. It wasn't me. It was just a job. It was my pictures, not my personality. And number two, I did not network enough. Network, network, network. If you're not networking, you're dying. I mean, if I think about my college relationships, like that was such a good time for me as a network. Like I networked with so many people. And like David, that's how David's like crazy, awesome, most extravagant career I can think of in the photography world. David started from his networking when you were in like your early 20s, right? Like that's like where you grew into this amazing, ridiculous world-class wedding photographer. Like it, it's kind of like nuts, like how you were branded as like this awesome travel photographer. It's like the coolest thing in the world. Yeah. I think networks and net, <clears throat> excuse me. I think networking is a, is a, you know, is extremely important. I just don't think it's, it's a, it's like a sleazy way. Like, you know, the, yeah. Networking in a sleazy way, like let's get together and try to use each other, blah blah blah. I don't know, like how do you, how do you approach networking, Rich? Like what what's your what's your thought process on that? Number one, if I could tell you again, be yourself. Like if you don't have to change for different people, if you don't have to put on your church hat and then come put your work hat on and then come put like your other hat on, as long as you're this, if like I really try to be the same to everybody because I don't want to be fake. Like it's not for everybody. And I tell my clients all the time, like, don't book me. Like, we're not going to get along. Like book the next guy. You're not worth the headache that is about to instill my business. But when it comes to networking, if you're yourself and you actually like that person and they actually are, do a good job, like why in the heck wouldn't you refer that person? Like, oh, I'm booked. Book my friend, Ryan Moser. He's funny. He's awesome. And you're going to get good pictures. Like if you can genuinely feel that when you say it, it makes networking authentic and it makes it real. So don't be like the sleazy car salesman that's just trying to get a deal. But find people that are like your people and don't be afraid of the community. Like, the, a, like a rising tide raises all ships. Your community, not competition. You are – you can only book August 1st once. So when every when 200 people want August 1st booked, like what I'll take when because there's enough business for everybody. Right? Is that That's a, right. Is answer well enough? That's right. That's right. That's awesome. Well, what's next for us, Rich? In the podcast world? Well, here's the thing. We talked, we teased last week that we were going to talk about how some people aren't worth the money. And I have like a funny wedding story, like for every occasion, uh, like, like the most hysterical stuff. I should write a book. Me and a buddy of mine thought about it once. We just have had the craziest things happen. So I'll, I'll pull out a good story for next week, but I really think next week we should dive more into like maybe the money side of it. Like today I told you the things I did right, the things I did wrong, and the things that were missing. But let's talk next week about 
how sometimes that that dollar figure, that payday isn't worth it. And I'm sure David's had some experience where, you know, you've you you probably turned down some big gigs just because you were like, you know, the the gut, your conscious and your gut is something you really need to follow. Um, because like I have a head and I have a heart and my mouth gets in the way a lot, but that feeling in the pit of my stomach and my conscious is like almost always right. So I, I, I say that would be a fun topic for next week. Maybe. I think that's great. <clears throat> yeah. I think, I think that'd be really, that'd be a great thing. We were even thinking about talking about that today, but I think we just decided like, Hey, we need to talk a little bit more about how, how to get started and all that stuff like that. So we could t- focus a little bit more on, on money and stuff next week. Money, money, money. Cause that's important. If you're doing this for free, don't be taken advantage of. I could talk about, man, oh, so there's so many, there's so many tangents we could go on and fill our time with. That's great. Well, should we do the giveaway? I'm ready. I'm, I'm messaging the team. Oh, we got it. <laughs> Look at Sweet. her. I love Crystal. Are, are you, I'm going to let you do it. I, t- I talk so much. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you do the giveaway winner. So what we're doing right now is we're gonna be giving away a hard drive, five terabyte hard, five, gosh, I can't talk today. Five terabyte, my, my an talking EHD. is terabiting, an EHD. <laughs> uh, who was saying that on our team, Betsy? I forget, yeah. uh, or was it Autumn? Yeah, anyways, uh, five terabyte hard we drive. You. <clears throat> you can plug it right into the, um, right into your computer and it powers it right there. You don't need a separate power cable and all that jazz. And one of you guys who shared this podcast live recording on Facebook is going to win that, that hard drive. And we have a winner right here. So thank Just you all so much. We love you. Hey, if you guys have not checked it out yet, I know we have a bunch of you guys like Korea Bell right here is for sure in the photo mentorship. Whitney Jameson is, I believe as well. Um, but anyways, Lori Cole, um, we have the photo mentorship.com. You can check it out. And that is our amazing membership community. It's where you can learn unlimited. Basically you can watch unlimited photography courses and training by me and rich and crystal, um, and our other photography mentors. And we, uh, we teach you photography. We answer your questions and we have just an amazing membership community of supporting each other and rising the tide as rich was talking about earlier. Uh, rising the tide to raise all ships. So if you have not joined the photo mentorship, I encourage you to check out the photo mentorship.com. Check us out, join our amazing community and really go like dive deep into pursuing your photography dreams. Um, the photo mentorship is what makes this podcast possible. We love you guys. Thank you all so much for listening. Today's giveaway winner for the free hard drive is Well done. Well done. Yeah. Be- Becky McCubbins. Becky, Becky McCubbins. McCubbins. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That was, that was I don't know if that was. I loved it. <laughs> mm, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Becky uh, McCubbins, you have won a free EHD, <laughs> external ex- external hard drive, five terabytes, uh, made by um, C8. I was like, I was going to say Lacy for a second. Um, and our, so our team will be in touch with you. Same and company. Your, is it Lacy and mm-hmm. Seagate? And you know, you know, I mean, Western Digital owns SanDisk now. I don't know if you know that. Hmm. I think I did hear, that, hear there was an acquisition there. So anyways, hey, you guys are awesome. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Next week, it's going to be awesome. Rich is going to be pulling out even more funny stories. Wasn't that hilarious, that story about like locking the mother of the bride, the, the mother-in-law of the bride? Um, Man, now some of my stories have no like applicable like life lessons, but I can, I'll tell you next week the story of where the old, old lady fingered my chicken. At a wedding, I, I don't, I, I don't and know. The what cops, that... And the cops were called. And the cops were called. It's that. It, there's no teachable thing within this, except that you just got to roll with it. But remind me next week, you guys. I'll talk about the old lady at the country club who fingered my chicken, my dinner. She fingered my dinner. Most okay. random <laughs> weird thing like, that ever understand. happened. I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Uh, gosh, I'm not responsible for anything. Whichever <laughs> side he's on, he's this guy says. Um, all right, we love you guys. Have it's a all true. <laughs> it's all true. One of my bu- one of my buddies, uh, Jeff, wrote a book called "It's All True," um, and it was all these crazy, funny stories. So we should we should write "It's All True" photography edition. That'd be fun. Uh, uh, half of them are rated R, but this one is not. It's just a really random. It sounded random, random stuff rated. happens. It sounded to me. rated R for a second. I was like, "Oh my god, what are you talking David, about?" David, get your mind out of the gutter, David just, Molnar. I'm, I'm uh, telling your mother. Hey, you're the one that said it. All right, love you guys. Have a fantastic <laughs> day. 
Uh, hey, we'll guess what? S- What's up? I love you. You too, brother. You talking about me or the or the uh, like eh, the, the students? Like, what, which? We'll do that.